everyone. Uh, my name is Kent Jenkins, but I do go by Snubby J on YouTube. And today I'm here to share with you uh, unique homemade instruments as well as my story. Um, so I grew up in Portland, Oregon. I was a very weird kid. And <laughs> when I, uh, I was growing up, I was trying out a lot of things. When I was five years old, I started playing piano. When I was eight years old, I started dancing. Uh, and by the time I was 12, I started picking up filmmaking making little Lego animations with my, my family camera. Uh, and by freshman year of high school though, I was doing all these things, I had no idea what I wanted to do, probably most like everyone else in high school. And I, I, I realized though, when I saw this unique show, I had a calling. Um, I saw this uh, group called the Blue Man Group in Las Vegas. And uh, I, when I saw their show, it, I just, my mind was blown. I, uh, they, they're this kind of comedy, theater, music, rock concert, dance party, all fused into one kind of a show. And I was really inspired because they have this part of their show where they play this PVC pipe instrument. And the way they play it is very uh, blue man style, but I was really intrigued by this one part of their show that was a tribute to all the rock stars that came before them. There's a lot of like Lady Gaga, Madonna, Ozzy Osbourne, and I just really loved how you could hear all this recognizable music on such a unique instrument. And so I went home with my dad and I was like, Dad, I really, really want to build this instrument. And he's like, they're, my parents are very supportive, but it's that thing of like, you know, parents, they have, uh, it's just a phase, he'll get over it kind of a thing. But I, I was really persistent. I, I researched online, I got some ideas of what I wanted to do, and eventually I was able to convince my dad, and we built my own PVC instruments. Um, and so actually, that, uh, there's a picture of my first PVC instrument. This is the second one I built. And uh, essentially what we did though, was we just went to Home Depot, bought out over 150 feet of ABS plumbing pipe, and uh, just went to town on it. There are ways to calculate the right length, but it ultimately comes down to how it sounds. So I had a little electronic chromatic tuner, and what I would do is I would tap the pipe and see where it was on the, the spectrum. And if it was a little flat, what we would do is cut off a little bit until it was just right. And we would cut off like a thousand of the tiniest little slivers to get it just right. It's not quite like a guitar, right, where you can easily just tune a peg that way. You really have to go one pipe at a time to make sure that they all sound the right note. And to get there, uh, it's a basic concept though. You know, the longer the pipe, the lower the note. Yeah. And then the higher the pipe, the shorter the, 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 short the pipe, the higher the note. And so the combination of all these notes allow me to have a full spectrum. And on this instrument, this is where I took it a step further than the Blue Man Group. I set it up like a piano. So I've got all the white keys and all the black keys. And the combination of all these notes allow me to take songs I grew up playing on the piano and put it right onto this. And so these, uh, the paddles as well was, uh, is part of the kind of experimentation with this instrument. I started out originally with these plastic paint stirrers and garden knee pad cushions, um, and eventually over time it has evolved to these uh, foam and corrugated plastic with two rods in the hand with more foam and tape, but it's, it's the idea is it's a nice sturdy, kind of like a drumstick for me, but you get a good sound out of it because the foam is pushing the air through the pipes. So now, rewind to 10 years ago. This is when I was in high school, and I first uh, just built my instrument. I was telling all my friends, I got this cool instrument. I don't know, I, like, I don't know what I'm really wanting to do with it yet, but my friends were like, okay, that's kind of interesting, weird. You know, they, they know I did music, they knew I danced, but they didn't really know what I was trying to do with this. And so I, what I did was I actually, I, I decided to go full out. I went uh, to my high school's talent show and I performed Bald in Blue as a blue man and basically <laughs> played a whole medley of songs uh, for my entire school. 
and they went nuts for it. It was the kind of thing where my weirdness was kind of getting accepted within my community for the first time to like this fullest extent, and I got invited to play at you know other concerts around town, more school events, and this was boosting my confidence, and uh, that's when it first clicked to me that I really want to become a blue man. Like, that's when I was like, this, this would be my dream, right? Like, doing the music, doing the theater, like, it was everything that I love to do all in one. And, and so by uh, the, the time of the talent show, I actually started uploading YouTube videos as well. And uh, that video, you know, put it up there, and it kind of caught in with uh, the Blue Man fan community as well as my own community up in Oregon. And I ended up actually getting an email from a stage manager from the Blue Man Group in New York City saying, hey, we all love your video, and we think you guys, uh, you, if you just keep at it, you could probably audition for us one day. <laughs> I was like, yeah, thank you. Like, that, that meant the world to me. Like, the, my heroes were acknowledging my existence, and it was like a possibility that my dream could come true. So come high school graduation, I learned that they had this open call in Chicago to audition to be a Blue Man. And so my mom and I flew out there, and I, uh, I, I did the whole like drumming audition, I did the, the, you know, the acting, and uh, I was told no. And that really killed me. I was like, I, I'm just really, really passionate about this, and this is my dream job, and it just it wasn't the right fit. And I figured, okay, that's okay, I just need to get more life experience. That's what they told me. So I went to college, I went to Loyola Marymount University, and for that, I actually built this Rimba Tubes instrument. Uh, and that's where I, I just built into my garage with my dad, and we figured, have the old set at home, and then this one down in Los Angeles. And uh, I went to school, and ended up, um, you know, starting to play around uh, my school, and I was playing for a dorm room talent show, and I took that video and uploaded it to YouTube, just like any other video of mine. And for some reason, this video went super viral. Within a week, it got over a million views, and then now it's got almost 10 million views, and just unfathomable. And that also started to boost my confidence, because then people all over the world were saying, wow, like you've got this great talent, you've been a great blue man, all these things. I was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. And so I, uh, at the end of my freshman year, they had an open call in Los Angeles. I was like, perfect. So I, I went to that audition, did the whole thing again, and was told, no, yet again. And I was a little heartbroken, but at this point, I was starting to find my community at school. I was starting to get appreciated for what I love to do, and so I continued following these other dreams of mine. I was, you know, musical directing, I was creating my own theater, I was, uh, I got to study abroad. All these experiences were starting to, like, multiply on themselves, that by uh, my senior year, I was uh, really getting involved on YouTube and started uploading more videos that I started to experiment with like special effects where I cloned myself like five times and played a Daft Punk medley and uh, just started collaborating with more people and starting to find my own voice, therefore. But by the end of my senior year, I was uh, still intrigued by this idea of being a part of the Blue Man. And so I reached out uh, again, saying, hey, I see you're you know, having open call auditions in Los Angeles. And so I, uh, it was literally, literally my graduation week. And I was like doing my own show, I was getting ready for graduation, finals, ugh. And like I, I, I pulled some strings with my professors and I got to go audition for Blue Man again. And this time, they invited me back to the callback. And then after that, they were like, we need you to go to New York and be, uh, just learn a routine and do it in front of the entire board of directors. And so they put me on a plane, they put me up in a hotel, I got to be in New York for two days, train in the training center, try out a routine, get to go bald and blue, the official makeup, and perform in front of basically my heroes. Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> but, and here it was, third time's the charm, and I was told no. And I was really, I, I was crushed, but also, at this point, I was starting to find my own voice. I was feeling like this is what I want to do, and it's in my own way that, like, I almost don't need the Blue Man Group. I was kind of finding my own, my own path, and 
from this these, over the next two years. So now I've done all these crazy things. I got to go perform in Germany on Das Super Talent. I was performing with some friends that I met at the Third Street Promenade while street performing. I've gotten, you know, I've been uploading more YouTube videos, but mainly just starting to create my own theater, create my own music, and feeling really inspired by just the community around me who loved me and respected me for what I was wanting to do. And I, even to this day, I still have this dream of like becoming a blue man, but it's, it's just, it's, I'm, I'm starting to find my own thing. And what's cool too is that I've got now fans all over the world who've gone off to build their own versions of the Rimba Tubes. There's, and you can tell because it's like set up the same way with an A to an E for both all those, all those instruments. And this is how I even got to perform abroad. I was like, I, I just called up a friend. I was like, hey, can I borrow your instrument for a weekend? And they're like, sure, yeah. And I was like, oh, I just need to borrow it for a show real quick. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm so grateful for that community that's come about because again, it's, it's kind of helping me find my own passions, my own way of doing it. And from only committing fully to this idea of becoming a blue man has helped me grow. And still to this day, even if I, like, I always say, like, oh, you know, I've moved on from Blue Man Group. This is not what I need to do anymore. But even this past summer, I reached out again to say to the casting director, I was like, hey, can I audition again? And I was told, no, just over email. It was just like a, it's, it's still too soon. We, we just saw you recently, two years ago. And we, after all these auditions, we don't think it's the right fit. And so it's like, if I were to ask my 14-year-old, like, tell my 14-year-old 14 14-year-old 14 self something, is that you are going to fail, but it's okay. Like, just by committing fully, you're gonna learn so much, grow so much, and find people that love you and support you for what you really love to do. And for me, I will still always have this dream of becoming a blue man, but that, that rejection will constantly help me drive to go further as I can and really become the performer and artist that I am today. And by being your own weird self, you'll, you'll find your own calling that way. So thank you. And I want to close out today with a, a little song. I don't know if I have time for it. Can I do it? Is that cool? Thank you. Uh, I'm going to play an original song of mine first. Uh, it's just to uh, give you a sample of how this instrument sounds. Uh, it starts off kind of nice and quiet, but gets really, really rocking by the end.